In this particular house, the load of the roof sits upon a post and beam structure. The straw bales will be used for infill only and do not take any structural load. What this means is that we have a series of 4 by 4 inch posts that are supporting a beam on top. In this case, this beam is about 4 by 8 inches. It's actually made out of two 2 by 8 pieces of lumber that are nailed together. So the post is carrying the load, as I said. It's coming down to this assembly here, and here's the foundation for the straw bales. Again, it's about 18 inches wide. It's raised two inches off the floor to prevent any moisture from getting into it. And we have the rebar that we put in during our foundation pour. Now the straw bales, again, they're strictly for insulation and for actually forming the surface of the walls. They're not carrying any load. And this is how it needs to work right now for code in this state anyway. The remaining walls within the house are all standard wood stud construction. We're using two by sixes because all of the drain waste and vent piping, in addition to the fresh water piping, will be run within these walls. There are very few frame walls within the house and the ones that do exist are all used for plumbing. By using a two by six, we are able to drill a two inch hole for the drain waste and vent pipes right through the stud and it stays structurally strong. We now come back and install the connector plates to the J-bolts that were installed during the foundation pour. These plates bolt into the J-bolts, and this will allow us to securely mount the 4x4 posts of the post and beam structure. This metal cap will keep the wooden posts from contacting the concrete and absorbing moisture. Uh, we will set this corner post and uh, plumb it in both directions, embrace it, and then we can set a line in order to set the remaining posts. Each post is then nailed into the connector plate and we will use a level to make sure it's plumb. Temporary cross bracing is then added to two sides. This is very important for keeping the post plumb during the construction process. Once the roof trusses are in place, these temporary braces will be removed. Right on. Right there? Right there. Okay. You can hold it. All good? Yep. We will then use our water level again to ensure that the beam will be at the same height everywhere in the home. Not quite. We're off by about 3 sixteenths. We pick one post to be our reference height okay. and the other end of the water level is then moved from post to post and that exact same height is marked Tapping. on all of them. It is then just a matter of cutting off the post at the marked height. It's accurate and it's simple. The actual perimeter beam itself is made out of two 2x8s nailed together, making sure that the joints are staggered. This continuous beam runs the full length of the house and is extremely strong. Due to its length, it will take several people to lift it into position. Take it forward and then once you get past the second post, go back and then we'll come forward again. This particular frame wall was built on the ground and then tilted into position. 
We position it on the J-bolts, get it leveled, add some shims to hold it into place, and then secure it. Al is installing a 2x6 sill plate to the top of the adobe wall bond beam. This sill plate is used for attaching the roof trusses to the adobe wall. The wooden plate will be bolted into place with the bolts that were set into the bond beam when it was poured. Two by six ceiling joists are used in both the entry hall and the kitchen. These joists will be a visual element of the ceiling and also support the floor and the loft. On the south wall, the connection to the beam will be hidden within the straw bale wall. Metal brackets were used on this side for maximum strength. The joist connection on the opposite wall will show so on this side, the joist was nailed in from the other side. Again, it's still a very strong connection. The loft floor is made out of aspen wood. Aspen is fast growing and is considered more environmentally sound than pine or oak. The downside is that it's very soft. Since this is not a high traffic area, the floor will not receive a lot of wear and tear so the softness will not be a real problem. Again, this adds to the environmental quality of the house. We are using a wood that is appropriate for the location. Our roof structure here is made out of what's called a pre-engineered truss. These were assembled off-site by a company that specializes in this type of system. And you can see it's just made out of two by fours. This saves on wood, it's extremely strong, it saved us time and some money in having not to have to build these ourselves. The specifications are sent to the truss manufacturer and they do all the engineering and assembly. On a specified date, the trusses are delivered and are ready to drop in place. The depth of the truss was sized to accommodate at least R55 insulation. In a small house, the trusses are easy to maneuver and can be carried by two people. Oh, this is great. Yeah. It's the yeah. Tom and Mark are installing a 2x4 vertical support that will be used to secure the first truss. This is a temporary brace and will be removed when all the trusses are in position. A rope is attached at the top of the truss, and you'll see why we're doing this a little bit Bank later on. Off this way, or you got off that way. It doesn't matter to me. Yeah, why don't you take a bunch back and I'll just tie this end off. Yeah. One by one, each truss is positioned and secured. We indicated the position of each truss ahead of time with a pencil line. I just want to make sure it's perpendicular when you nail it off. We used metal straps wherever a truss was to be connected to the beam. These are also known as hurricane straps. They make for a very strong mechanical connection that is superior to just using nails and screws. With these straps, the roof will not pull off in a severe wind. As the day progresses, the trusses continue to be dropped into position at an easy pace. This is a temporary cross brace that will hold the trusses in alignment until the roof sheeting is installed. In the short term, they will keep the roof from racking back and forth. Later on, this temporary cross bracing will be removed. Now we'll get back to the rope. How's that? It can go out a little bit. 
As Mark pulls on the rope, the truss can be made perfectly plumb with the beam below. Tom is using a plumb bob to visually see where the truss is in relation to the beam. So when the plumb bob is right over the beam, we know the truss is also right over the beam. The pre-assembled trusses do not include the roof overhang for the control of solar gain. So what we're going to do is attach a 2x6 rafter tail directly to the truss. This saved a considerable amount of wood since the upper member of the truss can be constructed out of 2x4s instead of 2x6s. This short 2x6 is easily attached to the truss and will be cut to the proper length when all of the pieces are in place. The 2x6 was used mainly for aesthetic reasons. It just looked better than a 2x4, and we were able to obtain the look without overbuilding the entire pre-assembled truss. The next morning, with just one day's worth of work of installing roof trusses, we can start to walk through the rooms and get a sense of scale for the first time. This is really an exciting time. I mean, finally, at last, it's starting to look like a house. A lot of the work to this point seems somewhat invisible. Now, while driving up the street, I can actually see my pencil sketches taking shape into an actual building. The roof over the north rooms of the house will be built by us instead of using a pre-built truss. Tom has cut each upper 2x6 to the proper length and he is now notching it so that it comes in direct contact with the 4x8-inch perimeter beam. This gives the 2x6 a flat surface in which to nail and screw it to the beam it is sitting on. Mark then screws and nails the other end to the pre-manufactured trusses, and this forms the lower-pitched roof on the north side of the house. This section of roof is over the bathroom, so two different directions of the roof will meet together. This is a very low-tech tool that we built. Since these rafters will be visible under the roof overhang, we wanted to ensure that they were at 90 degree angles to the right. beam. So we built this giant fork that is used as a lever to twist the rafter to the proper angle. Al then installs a metal bracket that will permanently hold it into position. These metal brackets add tremendous strength to the roof and will prevent it from blowing off even in extremely strong windstorms. Again, for a few more dollars in materials and a few extra minutes of time, it's cheap insurance. Three different elements make up the final roof assembly. First, a layer of OSB, which stands for Oriented Strand Board, is screwed into the trusses. This is followed by a layer of roofing felt, which is also known as tar paper. The final layer is corrugated galvanized metal sheeting. Note that the oriented strand board does not continue into the roof overhang. 1x4 lumber was used instead. This was done purely for aesthetic reasons. The wooden slats, with the exposed metal roofing in between, created a much nicer effect than solid OSB sheeting. As the roof sheeting is installed, the temporary cross braces are first removed. The oriented strand board comes in 4 by 8 foot sheets. This nail is being used strictly as a spacer. The width of one nail allows the sheeting to expand and contract with the temperature and humidity, so we leave this slight little gap in between to prevent buckling down the road as the temperature changes. Each sheet is then tack nailed into position, and then this is followed by using screws to make a very strong connection to the trusses. This is called an H-clip, and it's a simple metal bracket that is slipped onto the edge of one sheet. The next sheet of OSB then slips into the other end. It keeps the sheeting anchored together between the trusses and prevents warping. 
This worked well. To fit various schedules of the work crew, it is decided that the straw bale workshop will be held in seven days, on a 4th of July weekend. The metal roof sheeting will be installed after the workshop, in case any wood sheeting needs to be removed from the roof during the installation of straw bales. In one week, this project will take a dramatic visual turn away from conventional home construction.